Hi there, Cindy Dole, and this is a very special look into how they make those gorgeous Rose Parade floats. On Home Wizards, you know I love talking about all things home and garden, and that includes things like those moving gardens we see in the parade. You know, these floats can weigh up to 20 tons when they're covered with all those flowers and natural materials. Well, I got to meet up with a couple of floral designers whose job is to always be thinking and looking for that perfect flower or natural material to create just the right color, the look of feathers or human skin or eyelashes or maybe a black and white photograph of a president. And I'm taking you with me as I step inside the flower and seed laboratory of a floral designer and learn why many of the float builders choose flowers from other parts of the world, how and when they're glued on, and the float designer's biggest fears all ahead. So first, back to Azusa, where I spent some time in this small room in the barn for AES in Azusa. It's where floral director Scott Lamb takes this artist rendering of a float and then matches it with the perfect flowers and natural materials. And he's surrounded by all these small glass bottles of seeds and dried materials in every color you can imagine. Are you a gardener as well? I am. I'm very interested in gardening and I do uh, work in the yard uh, a lot in the off season, uh, but that is totally different than uh, thinking of flowers for floats. And how is it different? I mean, I, I'm guessing that with that, that background that you have, when you're kind of futzing around in the yard, you might go, oh, whoa, that, I'm going to use that as an idea next year. You know, working with this for so long, or being in this business, uh, you have to know the length flowers live after they've been cut. You have to know the, the type of seeds that will last or the colors and uh, the gardening, you can, you can get your colors and you can plant them and they last a whole season. Here, they last a week. That's it. And they have to look really great on that parade day, January 1st. So there you have to juggle between uh, what flower you'd like to use and what's available to use. And there's so many issues. I mean, for instance, right here we have this helmet for Texas Christian University. And I understand that the shade of purple is really hard to duplicate, right? It's very hard. Uh, they have what I call a true purple in the school colors and I don't have that purple available to me in a flower I just don't have that available so we have to get as close as we can in the natural flower to make it work it it, it works a lot of times and uh, sometimes it misses a little but you don't cheat and all of a sudden go like to Michael's art supply and get artificial flowers you, you don't know how often I would love to do that <laughs> because I could make it exact <laughs> But, uh, but that, we know there are rules against that. Rules, um, yes. I noticed as we went to the back there, we saw there were some buckets of flowers. Kind of here it is a week and then some before the parade, but no roses and no orchids yet. When do they come? No. The, uh, the roses and orchids always come either the day after Christmas or two days after Christmas because, of course, they don't last as long. Uh, right now we've received the carnations, the... Uh, uh, mums, uh, we, we'll be getting an iris that will be very tight, and it'll take four or five days for them to open, which is great because then we'll put them in a vial and put them on the float. So anything that needs to open or that will last a good week, we get in as soon as we can. So I think the people listening who have cut flowers at home want to know from you, what's the trick to keep them fresh longer? People at home with their flowers in a vase, you tend to be more gingerly with the flowers. You treat them very carefully. You handle them carefully. Well, here you're talking about thousands and thousands of blooms and hundreds and hundreds of buckets. And I hate to say this, but you'd be surprised at how some of these flowers are treated, abused. Not intentionally, but we just, we just have to move them fast. Yeah, yeah. And once they get on the float, they're beautiful. They're beautiful. So no help for us at home. <laughs> I mean, in terms of water, I mean, are you, everyone says, well, you add soda to the vial, or you add some kind of magical thing. There is flower food that we, uh, we do apply to the water that goes in the vials. 
uh, that hold the roses and iris and gerberas, that will help at home or anywhere. It's a flower food. You usually get it at a, at a, a florist shop or at a craft hobby shop. Which is basically sugar, right? It has some kind of a sweet, yeah? yeah. I think it's sugar and it's also bleach. Because antibacteria, antifungal. Yeah. Yes, because if you do, you know, at home, what I do is I get a half a cap of bleach if I've got a large bla vase, and I put a half a cap of bleach in it. Keeps the water clear much longer than if you do not use it. And how do economics play into it in terms of, hey, it was a bad season for orchids, or hey, we're all out of that particular kind of rose, or you know, the weather pattern did this to that particular crop? Yeah. Well. It's always a problem every year. Somewhere in the world, they're having bad weather. And a lot of times, it doesn't hurt the availability of the flowers as much as the cost. Just to put it in perspective, as people are looking at a float or like a section of a float on their TV screen or even in person, and they're seeing a bunch of roses, I mean, how much for that bunch of roses? Let's say they're looking at maybe 50 roses, you know? The Pac-Man float, for example, will cost probably about 30 to forty thousand dollars for the flowers that includes the vile flowers like roses gerberas and that and the mums and the carnations uh, some of the smaller floats maybe ten to twenty thousand dollars for those flowers so has the price gone up significantly just from last year i wouldn't say significantly but if it goes up a a nickel a stem and you're talking about twenty six thousand stems that's significant you know every nickel it goes up it, it just adds up and so your assignment is to probably to not only be aware of the beauty of the, of the material the flower but be aware of the cost and you yeah oh yes i i have a budget and uh, I, I try to stay within that budget as best i can if i find that a flower needs to be used that's more expensive than my budget calls for I get a special okay for it. You get a spanking. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, really. I, uh, I get, yeah. <laughs> and we know that a lot of these exotic flowers come from exotic places, right? I mean, name some of the places where these amazing flowers come from. We get a lot of orchids from Thailand, obviously Hawaii, Indonesia. We've gotten roses from South America. Israel, Holland, and, and even some uh, Mexico and the United States. A lot of our bulbs, like iris stuff, all come from Holland and uh, at South Africa. But even though California is known for our flowers, most of the floats turn to other places first. We're going to find out why and what else in the floral director's pantry can be used to make a Rose Parade float come alive. A special look behind the scenes, how they make the Rose Parade floats continues. I'm Cindy Dole on KFWB News Talk 980. Welcome back for this special look behind the scenes, how they make the Rose Parade floats. I'm Cindy Dole, and I love color of all kinds. The office of Scott Lambs, though, is, is like a paint store. And instead, his is a laboratory of sorts for the seeds, the dried flowers, all the materials that will be used as a color guide for any design that comes his way to create a Rose Parade float. So tell me about these seeds. I mean, this seed collection and other natural materials is really amazing. I mean, it, it's from brown to blue to orange to green to you name it. Yes, these are all, all seeds and or blends of petals, the things that'll dry and stay the color that we want them to. A lot of petals for flowers, like carnation petals, just turn brown. Status petals stay light blue, dark blue, purple, yellow, white, and so we were able to use those by grinding them and smoothing them on the float. Then we've got every type of spice and seed you can imagine, pepper and crushed raspberry, seed? raspberry seeds. We've got rye seed like you put on your lawn, uh -huh. and uh, we've got coarse pepper that you just, everybody uses, but it's a wonderful texture for uh, rocks and granite. I'm always amazed at what you use for skin or for um, eyelashes or mm -hmm. hair, all that stuff, feathers. We, we use combinations of uh, like, there is a curly seaweed 
that we buy at Asian markets that we use for eyebrows. Eyelashes, sometimes we actually will take, cut little strips of uh, seaweed, curl them in our hand, and then just apply them like you would do a fake eyelash to the eyes. And uh, uh, there's a lot of spices involved, ground strawberry, ground uh, mustard seed. Uh, we blend that with like either farina or a so name it's basically of it. a cereal stew. It is, <laughs> and it creates it is. the flesh with a little bit of rosiness yes. or or whatever ethnicity, mm -hmm. right, to get the dark we, tone. We will do a base of like cornmeal or something similar to that, and then we will blow on strawberry powder for cheeks, or we'll take a, a mustard if we needed a yellow tinge, mm -hmm. or or a deep. We'll darken the strawberry powder with like a paprika for like mm -hmm. inside of ears and mm -hmm. and lips. And things like and that. And you use a lot of coconut. You have flakes, macaroon, and fancy shred. <laughs> yes, yes. Coconut is a wonderful white. White, you would think, is not that, it wouldn't be that hard of a color, but a bright white is very tough to get. And coconut, ground up, is a really wonderful white, a, a really bright white. And, and coconut works very well, and it'll last. And cheaper than flowers, probably. Well, yes, but... It's more used for the look than the, the cost. Uh, on, on China Airlines, we're doing a lot of the waves in coconut. Uh, it wasn't necessary to get a flower on that wave. We can do them in coconut and then enhance them with flowers. Mm -hmm. And in terms of buying local, I mean, there's always this push to try to help the local grower, local farmer. Are those flowers of worth or it doesn't work because of some reason or? We used to buy everything local. Orchids, roses, carnations, and a lot of the field flowers. Well, the land is now too expensive just to grow flowers on. It is, it is you know, being subsidized and sold off for a lot of different uh, developments. It has been pushed out of California a lot, except for some of the field flowers and some of the major production of like, there's Gerbera daisies grown in Ventura that they have a big production that everybody knows about, Maximum Nursery. And, uh, but locally, we can't compete with the prices coming from South America. Yeah. It's like a lot of things, huh? Yeah. It's kind of sad, but yeah. I mean, you can't help it, I guess, right?